Hi guys, this is Bilal Khan and you are watching Simplified Coding. Welcome to the second video of Android Paging Library tutorial series. And in this video, we will work with our API. So I told you in the first video that we are going to fetch data from Stack Overflow API or you can say Stack Exchange API. So this is the answers API that I am going to use to display our lists. So here is the API and this is the URL and with the URL we pass the page number, the number of the page that we want to fetch and obviously we will start from page 1. Then the size of the page, it determines how many items you want on a single page. And then finally the site. So I am fetching the data from the site stack overflow. And when I go to this URL, it is a get request and it returns us this data so basically it is an JSON object inside the object I have items that contains an array then I have another attribute that is has more so if has more is true that means we have next page so it defines whether we have a next page or not then we don't need to worry about the other attributes now remember it is a stack exchange API so if you will send the repeated request very frequently then it will ban your IP for some time maybe for a few seconds so that you need to care about okay and if you want you can also create your own API but that will take time so that is why I am not doing that thing in this video. So this is the API now to fetch this response we need to create a Ojo class which we call plain old Java object or you can say model class. So first I will create a class here and I will name it stack API response. So I have this class. Now inside this class I will define all the attributes. So first we have item. So let's define it item. So item is an array that has many more attributes so inside item we have array of json object this json object contains another json object owner and some properties so we have to map the data into our java class and for this first we will create another class item and this class item will contain this items Okay, so here we will define a list, list of type item and we will name it items. Now remember the name should match with the JSON keys. So here I have items, that is why I have written items here. If you want to give different name, then you can use this serialized name annotation. Here you can write item and then you can give any name that you want. But I will give the same name so I don't need this annotation. So I have list of type items. Then I have has more back of quota max and quota remaining. So copy everything. So has more is boolean. Let's make everything private. So we have the class for stack API response. Now we need to create this class. Inside this class, uh, we have owner is accepted score and other stuff. So let's copy. First I have owner and owner is another nested JSON object. So we need to create one more class and I will name this class owner. Fine. Now we have private owner owner. That's it. Then private boolean is accepted. Make sure you are typing the same name as in the JSON key. Then we have private and score. Private and last underscore activity underscore date. Private. Actually, it is long. 
let's make it long last edit date private long creation date answer id and question id so we have all the data that we need for this item now item has owner so we also need to define properties for owner so let's see what we have in owner i will copy everything and then first i have private and reputation then private long user underscore id then private string user underscore type then private and accept underscore rate then private string profile image then private string display underscore name and then private string amp so we have everything that is needed to fetch the data and we need to create getters and setters but for the sake of simplicity i will make every property public so sorry i created it as private but i will make everything public okay if we are making it, it public we don't need getters and setters actually we don't need to set the values for this example because we are fetching the data from server so we we only need getters so instead of creating getters i made every variable as public so this is our class that will parse the response now we need an api interface because we are going to use retrofit as i told you so let's create an interface and i will name it api now inside this api interface we will create our api call so as you can see our api call is answers and it is a get call so we will write get and here we will define the url which is actually url endpoint which is answer then we will define a call and call will return us the stack api response then we will name it get answers fine and with the call we need to pass some queries query parameters so what we need to pass is we need to pass page number page size and site so let's define the queries using the query annotation first we have page remember you need to write exactly same as it is here so we have page then page size so page is of type int then page size again it is int then we have site and site is string so we have our api call now we need our retrofit client that will make the api call so again we will create one more class and we will name it retrofit client or you can name it anything you want but this name makes some sense and here i am going to use a singleton pattern because we need this client frequently in our example so the first thing i will define in this class is the base url of our api so let's define a public static final private you can make it public but i don't need to access this variable outside this class so i am making it private so private static final string base url and the base url is this answers and remember you need to put a forward slash that is very important if you are working with 
retrofit and actually base url is this 2.2 and then we are calling answers from this api so after the base url a forward slash is necessary then i will create a static instance of the same class because we are going to use singleton pattern as i told you so private oops private static retrofit client and i will name it m instance then i also need the retrofit object cool now let's create a private constructor so we have our private constructor and inside this constructor i will build the retrofit object so i will write retrofit equals to new retrofit dot builder and then i will define the base url which is base url then i will add a converter factory and we are going to use json converter factory and the benefit of using a converter factory is we don't need to pass the json manually it will be done automatically and then finally we will build the retrofit object now we will create a synchronized static method and the return type would be retrofit client instance of the same class and then i will name this method as get instance then here we will check if this m instance is null that means the object is not yet created so as we need to create only a single instance we will check if it is null create the object if not return the object so we will create the object by calling the private constructor and then finally we will return this m instance now lastly we will create one more method to get this api so let's create public uh, type api this is the return type and then we can name it get api now it will return us return retrofit dot create api dot class so we have our retrofit client now we can call it to get the data so let's see if it is working or not so we will write here call and make sure you are using this retrofit to call of type stack api response and let's name the object as call then we will call retrofit client dot get instance dot get api dot get answers and for this method get answers we will pass the page page number and it is one we will catch the first page then let's say we want 50 items for the first page and we want it from stack overflow website so we have the call now we will enqueue it Okay. now inside the method on response we will get the response so we can get it like response dot body and it will return us and stack api response object now we can simply display toast dot make text main activity dot this and stack api response dot items dot size just to know whether it fetched the data or not so it should give us 50 okay then the length and then show and we need to wrap this thing inside string dot value of because it will give us an end and for toast we need string so we have everything now go to manifest file and give internet permission that is required so we will write users permission internet now let's try running our application you can see we are getting 50 that means the data is being fetched so that's all for this video guys in the next video we will move further we will create a recycler view and we will fetch the data page wise so i think it would take two three more videos
सो इफ यू थिंक दिस सीरीज इज हेल्पफुल प्लीज हिट ऑन द लाइक बटन सब्सक्राइब टू सिंप्लीफाइड कोडिंग एंड टेल योर फ्रेंड्स अबाउट सिंप्लीफाइड कोडिंग प्लीज हेल्प मी रीच फिफ्टी के सब्सक्राइबर एज सुन एज पॉसिबल सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर दिस वीडियो गाइज आई विल सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो बाय